A shooting at YouTube headquarters sent three people to the hospital. We'll take you to the scene and hear from a police and an eyewitness. And distracted driving kills. And for one mother, that slogan is all too real. A new PSA hopes to stop these incidents. And China retaliated against the U.S. with new tariffs on fruit and pork. We'll have reaction. Annenberg TV News is next. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. You think that after we've seen Las Vegas, Parkland, the Pulse nightclub shooting, that we would see an end to this, but we have not. A shooting at the YouTube headquarters in the Bay Area left one dead and three injured. Good evening, I'm Tommy Brooksbank. And I'm Hamda Salhout. We have team coverage of the San Bruno shooting at the YouTube headquarters, and we're live in Playa Vista at the YouTube space. We start with Annenberg Media's Olivia Sandusky, live in our newsroom. Olivia? YouTube employees reported hearing gunshots inside the building around 1 this afternoon. The workers barricaded themselves inside while the shooter opened fire. Police arrived and helped hundreds of people evacuate the building 20 minutes after the shooting began. The San Bruno police chief has details about what happened. At 12.46 p.m. this afternoon, San Bruno Police Department received numerous 911 calls regarding gunshots at the YouTube campus located on Cherry Avenue in our city. We have one subject um, who is uh, deceased inside the uh, building uh, with a self-inflicted wound that at this time uh, we believe to be the shooter, but we're still following up on that. Witnesses eating nearby heard the shots and saw workers rushing out of the building. Authorities identified the shooter as a female in her 30s. She was found dead by a self-inflicted gunshot. At least three others were shot, leaving one of them in critical condition. At this point, sources tell the Associated Press that the shooting is being investigated as a domestic dispute. Several employees sent out texts and tweets throughout the shooting to update their families on the situation. Annenberg Media's Taylor Edgehill is live at the YouTube space over in Playa Vista to see how it's affecting those in Los Angeles. Thanks, Olivia. I'm here at the YouTube space in Playa Vista, and although the shooting occurred earlier today over 400 miles away in San Bruno, California, the ramifications are being felt all the way here in Los Angeles. Here at the YouTube space, the parking lot is almost entirely void of cars, and in fact, there's a sign on the main entrance saying the reception is closed, even though the closing hours for this facility are technically until 9 p.m. tonight. So it appears that all people who were using this space earlier and employees have left the building in light of the shooting earlier today at YouTube's headquarters. Now back in San Bruno, one witness says he saw a woman shot in the leg and yet another victim shot 10 times. Man, it was just like two, three shots. Then I seen the girl run, running out and then she was shot in the leg. I checked on the girl, then after I checked on the girl, she all right, she yeah, yeah, she got shot in the leg. So then I ran back over there and then I'm looking inside and then when I'm looking, then the other guy goes, oh, she just, he just shot the other person. And that person got shot 10 times, I mean. Google CEO Sundar Pichai released a statement earlier saying, quote, the shooting was a horrific act of violence. Google will continue to provide support to help everyone in our Google family heal from this unimaginable tragedy. All right, thanks for that report, Taylor. Well, the Auto Club says on average, nine people die every day from distracted driving. Annenberg Media's Cole Sullivan shows us how texting behind the wheel changed one mother's life forever. Dawn Maurer's daughter, Deanna, was the light of her life. Uh, she was very kind and uh, loving. A recent San Jose State grad, Deanna wanted to be a varsity softball coach. She was my rock of everything, so I lost a lot of that with her. Deanna was on her way home from work when she was rear-ended at 85 miles per hour. I, I think about her and what, what was going through her mind at the time. Did she see it coming? Did she call my name? And I couldn't be there for her. The driver that hit Deanna was texting. Now, 
A new PSA from the Auto Club is trying to stop distractions behind the wheel. Put down your phone. And if that PSA doesn't make you want to pull aside before responding to this, you might just get pulled over. And that's not cheap. Fine is right around 160, give or take a few dollars. Officer Wells has worked traffic at LAPD for seven years. Every other vehicle, someone is on that phone. Today, he's pulling over drivers that he spots sending messages behind the wheel. Let's go see what we can find. It doesn't take long. This guy, this man. He's going to get a citation for uh, driving while holding his phone in his hand. A small price to pay to stop stories like Don Mauer's. I try and be happy. You know, I try and and I have a face that, you know, I try and get through things, but for six years solid, every day I cried, every single day. A daily memory of the impact distracted driving can have. For Annenberg Media, I'm Cole Sullivan. All right, thanks for that report, Cole. The Environmental Protection Agency loosened regulations on car manufacturers today. Our political anchor, Nayanika Kapoor, joins us with details. Nayanika. Thanks, Hamda. The head of the EPA announced today that the government will be rolling back the Obama-era fuel efficiency and emission standards for cars and light trucks. I'm here to announce that those standards that were set, uh, that we are obligated to, to evaluate, we are determining, I am determining that those standards are inappropriate and should be revised. Environmental standards in California are stricter than the rest of the country. A waiver in the Clean Air Act has allowed California to set its own rules and a dozen states have adopted these stricter standards. The EPA is re-examining this waiver and the environmentalists call this an abuse of power. The federal government is coming in and saying like, oh, your, um, your policies are too strict is kind of um, hypocritical, I think, of uh, the Republican Party, especially since they are so for states' rights. I don't think we're going to back down. Um, I think we want to keep our standards where they are. Scott Pruitt has also been accused of several ethics violations, including misusing taxpayer money and having improper ties to lobbyists. President Trump has expressed his support for Pruitt and told him, quote, We've got your back. Hamda, back to you. All right, thanks, Nayanika. President Trump is calling on the military to guard the U.S.-Mexico border until the border wall is complete. While speaking at a lunch with Baltic leaders today, Trump said he already discussed the plan with Defense Secretary Jim Mattis. We have very bad laws for our border, and we are going to be doing some things. I've been speaking with General Mattis. We're going to be doing things militarily. Until we can have a wall and proper security, we're going to be guarding our border with the military. Trump has previously discussed his frustrations with the lack of progression on the wall. His announcement comes a day after administration officials said they are working on new legislation to close what they describe as immigration loopholes. The U.S. and China are in the middle of a trade tiff, and some experts fear it could turn into a trade war. Annenberg Media's Yi Jun Wang spoke with some China experts today. Today, the Trump administration announced it's about $50 billion in tariffs on some Chinese products. The U.S. will impose a new 25% duty on electronics, aerospace, and machinery products. China officially notifies the World Trade Organization today. It is imposing tariffs on about $3 billion worth of U.S. imports, including pork, wine, and fruits. This is in retaliation for new U.S. tariffs on imported aluminum and steel. In terms of American consumers, initially, it's going to be hard to see any direct impact. But for people who work in businesses that import these metals to make different things, that's probably going to have an impact. Uh, it's hard to know how big an impact because so President we'll be Trump has already China. provided we'll exemptions for South Korea, for Canada, and, and for some other places. At USD, there are over 500 international students are from China. We asked them to see whether these increasing tensions between China and America could influence their career decisions. Even though the trade war could increase my living cost, if U.S. has more job opportunities, I would choose to stay here. The trade conflict could also affect this year's midterm elections. Here in California, the reddest part of the state, 
is also the part of the state most likely to be affected by these trade policies. The Central Valley, which grows all kinds of nuts, uh, pistachios and almonds, the northern areas that are famous for wine production. These places voted for Trump. China has said it is open for dialogue and discussion. Now the ball is in the U.S. court. For Annenberg Media, I'm Yi Jing Wang. Three assembly members in L.A. County unexpectedly vacated their seat positions last year. And today, voters are going back to the polls to pick their new representatives. Annenberg Media's Jordan Winters checked out the nearby 54th district. Jordan? That's right, Hamda. One of those special elections is happening in the 54th district. That includes Culver City, Inglewood, and Baldwin Hills. Voters in Culver City are going to the polls for a special election today. They are three Democrats, Sidney Kamlager, Grayson Palmagan, Terpin Piquado, and one Republican, Glenn Radcliffe. Some voters say this is an opportunity to support the local schools and community programs that they won't have in other elections. Um, well, because I live in Culver City, we're a small city, and I feel like especially my vote will count because I think most people don't vote in special elections. Low voter turnout is a problem during general elections, and special elections routinely draw even fewer voters. I'm at a polling station right now in Culver City, which has five precincts in it. However, as you can see, it's still pretty empty in here. The LA County Registrar says mail-in ballots must be taken into account when discussing turnout. The Registrar has received about 17,000 mail-in ballots as of yesterday. One voter in the 54th district said distinguishing between the candidates was difficult. Well, I don't think they really feel different, but like I said, you can complain if you just sit at home. And unfortunately, too many people sat at home and that's why we got Trump. Special elections can also put candidates in a better position for midterms. Aurora Walker put in a write-in candidate. My biggest concern is, is he gonna make it onto the next ballot? One of the four candidates in the race for the 54th district must secure more than 50% of the vote, or there will be a runoff in June. The polls are open until eight o'clock tonight. If you think you might be in one of the three districts where there's a special election, you can check at lavote.net. Hamda and Tommy. An internet threat left the Muslim population shaken. We'll hear from an expert who evaluated the danger. And dozens of tenants are at risk of losing their homes. And they say it's all a scam. and They're paying the price. And a major music streaming service became public today. An expert tells us what this means for the company. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there. Junk food. Do you see that truck? <laughs> It's a two Michelin star chef, all for free, ladies and gentlemen, all for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How are we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Really? Is, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Here at top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a it's little like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow? No. Snow-covered trees? Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. Tenants of one South Los Angeles housing complex are facing eviction tonight after falling victim to an alleged rent scam. Here's what to look out for so you don't find yourself in a similar situation. They say they've paid their rents but are still getting kicked out of their home. The tenants of this house in South Los Angeles must find somewhere else to live after their landlord didn't get their rent. We put our money up and uh, 
They got our money and they do what they want to do. Most of the people that live here are low income residents, some with mental disabilities. The building is in poor condition, but cheap rent kept tenants from looking for housing elsewhere. Now, scenes of disrepair are all over the place in this home. If you look at the sink here, it's been clogged for weeks and it's nearly coming out of the wall. And it doesn't end there. Tenants say the landlord hasn't fixed moldy ceilings, clogged toilets, and unfinished flooring. 120 violations is the latest count of violations regarding habitability in this space. But tenants say a woman, not the landlord, is the culprit. They say Giovanna Wilkerson rents the property from the owner but doesn't live in the building. Instead, she leases out the home to over 35 tenants who pay up to $700 a month. All that money has not been paid to the landlord in weeks. It's not over until Giovanna Wilkerson goes to jail. The only place that Ms. Wilkerson has done this in, these are not the only people who have been victimized by this scheme. Tenants say they want the city's attorney's office to prosecute Wilkerson and prevent this from happening again. When you take advantage of the most vulnerable people in society who are just trying to not be homeless and you take their money and you leave them in a position to be evicted and you run that as a business throughout our city, that needs to be stopped. Annenberg Media reached out to Okerson and the landlord, but both declined to comment. Well, you know, Tommy, it's been pretty hot. Yeah, I've been loving the weather the past couple of days. I'm hoping it's here to stay. Paula, what can you tell us? Well, I can say that today was a relatively sunny day um, with clouds dispersed throughout. Not as warm as I would like personally, but I can't complain with people in the northeastern part of the United States are hit with a winter storm in April. But if we take a look over at tomorrow's temperatures in the Inland Empire, we'll see that it's going to be 79 degrees in San Bernardino. So that's actually pretty nice, close to 80. And then over in the valley tomorrow, we'll see that it's going to be... A little cooler at 73, surprisingly, normally it's hotter in the valley, and then over in the beach, much cooler at 62. And then tomorrow in the USC area, it's going to be 71, so again, not as warm as I'd like, but we'll see if hopefully things will warm up for the five-day forecast. So it won't, actually. The five-day forecast things will stay pretty consistent and static through the week, and it'll be 70 degrees uh, for the highs and the lows staying the same. And then to the weekend, we see Saturday showers in the morning, and then uh, by Sunday, we'll see some sun again at 73. The deadliest flu season the United States has had in over a decade is finally coming to an end. The season lasted longer than the season lasted two months longer than usual. At its peak, 22 children died in just one week. That number dropped to four pediatric deaths last week. Now, why was this flu season so bad? Doctors say it's because of a powerful strain of the virus. It's called H3N2, and it's really hard to kill. The CDC is predicting that flu season will pr officially be over by mid-April. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that it's almost done. We don't have to worry about getting sick anymore. Absolutely. Definitely. Thanks, Paula. An anti-Muslim flyer circulating around the globe has law enforcement taking measures to increase security around mosques. Cities have warned Muslims to be on high alert. They're calling it Punish a Muslim Day. The flyer organized in the UK lists several harassments that range from verbal abuse to physical abuse and even terror attacks on mosques. USC's Department of Public Safety is aware of the flyer and has notified all of their officers. DPS Assistant Chief David Carlisle told Annenberg Media DPS has been in contact with the Dean of Religious Life over the past week. This is to arrange regular patrol checks on the religious center. They also have someone monitoring social media to make sure there are no imminent threats to the Muslim population on campus. The reaction is based on the Quran that says when ignorant people are insulting you, your best response is to ignore them and, and say peace and move on. The threat level should be determined by our law enforcement. They're the ones who are specialists in determining uh, whether this is a credible threat or if it's just propaganda. Dean of Religious Life Varun Soni was also concerned for the safety of Muslim students on campus. He said, quote, I first learned about Punish a Muslim Day through an advisory sent issued by the Council on American Muslim Relations. We've been monitoring social media from our end and we've viewed through our threat assessment and public safety protocols and, and teams. We have reached out to Muslim student leaders on campus and have also increased the presence of DPS officers at the University Religious Center. 
Well, Hamda, we had such great weather over the past couple of days. Did you have a chance to check out the USC baseball team? You know, I didn't, but I'm sure our sports anchor Jody was there. You know, of course I was there. Unfortunately, they did drop their last couple of games, but I think tonight they'll have a chance to write that out on a round. And the women of Troy have an absolute phenom in the water who picked up another conference award this week. And a local high school had quite the assembly today, featuring the Los Angeles Rams. Sports are next. Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even brought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot. Buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Well, the madness is finally over. Number one seed Villanova Wildcats took down number three seed Michigan 79 to 62 last night. Nova Nation's second national title in three years was led by redshirt sophomore Dante DiVincenzo. The guard came off the bench to put up a career high 31 points, and he was named the most outstanding player at the Final Four. The Wildcats made winning the title look easy, winning their six tournament games by an average of 17.67 points. But it was pretty much madness for everyone else. There were a total of 20 upsets throughout the tournament, the most memorable, of course, being the number 16 University of Maryland, Baltimore County, upsetting the top-ranked team in the tournament, Virginia, the first upset of its kind. And everyone else's favorite underdog team, number 11, Loyola Chicago, just the fourth 11 seed to make it to the Final Four. Now sliding onto the diamond, USC Baseball's matchup tonight against UCSB could be a chance for the Trojans to right the ship after suffering a tough pair of losses to Washington over the weekend. Now despite jumping out to an early lead at the start of the game, USC couldn't quite keep up with the Huskies. Throughout the series, the Trojans put up eight runs off of 21 hits while leaving 22 runners on base. Batting 237 on the season, USC will have to start to string together their hits, something Washington did well to push runs across. Now let's check in on the game in Santa Barbara. It looks like it's the bottom of the ninth, and well, USC didn't seem to have a problem scoring tonight, putting up nine runs against Santa Barbara. And now diving into the pool, USC women's water polo freshman driver Paige Hochschild just picked up her fourth straight MPSF Newcomer of the Week award, her sixth on the season. Like a huge factor for me has been the older girls helping me um, to kind of start fitting into the program immediately when I got here. So um, learning from the older girls has been a big thing for me. But as a team, I think our counterattack is really important for us and um, also our defense. So I think those are big things for our team right now. So after her seven goal game this weekend, Hochschild tied the 2018 MPSF high of goals scored in a game. She also has a conference high of 50 goals this season, making her just the sixth USC true freshman with at least 50 goals in a season. While her individual success is spectacular, it's just one of the many main factors for the team's success this season. I think our team chemistry has been a really big thing for us. I also think um, just our communication in the pool and our uh, I think defense is another really big thing for us. We have two amazing goalies um, in the cage behind us, and so uh, those are some big factors that have helped us win some big games this year. Led by Hochschild, the women of Troy host number one California this Saturday, the first of their final four games of the regular season. 
Now, earlier today, the Los Angeles Rams had a chance to connect with some local high schoolers, and our sports correspondent, Angel Viscara, was out there. Angel? Thanks, Jody. Well, just a mile from the USC campus, in the shadow of the LA Memorial Coliseum, lies Manuel Arts High School. And this afternoon, the Los Angeles Rams took some time to give back to the local school. The Rams Cleats for Character program travels throughout the Southland, donating cleats worn by players on the football team. Members of the organization also took time to stress to the students the importance of goal setting and education. Next. Rams Director of Community Relations, Jonathan Franklin, shared his life story and emphasized the importance of vision in a young person's life. Franklin is UCLA football's all-time leading rusher and was drafted to the NFL before recently being forced to medically retire from the game. It's really important that the Los Angeles Rams are throughout the community, you know, embracing, because we are LA, you know, um, we enjoy, you know, the community and, and... Well, the adage goes, you give and you shall receive. Today, the Rams also picked up Pro Bowl wide receiver Brandon Cook, so definitely some good karma going around for the Rams. Back to you, Jody. That was a great toss. I don't know how much I feel about getting some worn cleats. Hopefully they don't smell too bad, but pretty exciting for some high schoolers. Yeah, definitely cool to see them giving back to the community. Thanks, Jody and Angel. We have new fans. We have news for Spotify fans. We'll tell you more when we come back. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. boy. <laughs> When you ride on the bus or rail, don't eat popcorn, meat, or kale. Food can smell and it makes a mess. Keep LA Metro clean and fresh. Come along with me, let's go. It's time to ride on the Metro. When eating food causes problems, you know Super Kind will be there to solve them. Come along with me, let's go. It's time to ride on the Metro. When eating food causes problems, you know Super Kind will be there. Spotify became a public company today after joining the New York Stock Exchange. CEO Daniel Ek said the company will participate in a direct listing, which means it will not be raising money. Price of $165 this morning, giving it an estimated valuation of $29.5 billion. I just hope this doesn't mean more expensive premium um, charges every month. But. Hopefully not. <laughs> Thanks for watching Annenberg TV News. From everyone here at Annenberg Media, I'm Hom DeSalhoud. And I'm Tommy Brooksbank. You can catch us on the web at uscannenbergmedia.com.